James 5 verse 1 Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 19 they shall cast their silver in the streets and their gold shall be removed your silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord Yahweh they shall not satisfy their souls neither fill their bowels because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity from the AP brother can you spare a coin? A one trillion one? By Calvin Woodward. Today. Washington AP. Some politicians think they found a silver bullet for the impasse over the depth ceiling. Or depth limit. Except the bullet is made of platinum. Mint a one trillion coin. Token of all tokens and use it to flood the treasury with cash and drive Republicans crazy. Even its serious proponents, who are not that many, call it a gimmick. They say it is an oddball way out of an oddball accounting problem that will have severe consequences to average people's pocketbooks and the economy if it is not worked out in coming days. From the Business Insider, the Treasury Secretary Janet Yelling trashes minting a one trillion coin as solution to debt ceiling crisis as U.S. inches towards default. Shalom, all praises, blessings, glories, and honors be unto Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who have taught me this truth, as well as men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad, which means peace and mercy to the elect of the nation of Israel, whom are you so called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners of the seed and of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great, and abroad. To you I say Shalom, and Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shara Tazad, this lesson is edifying. We are about a week away and a half from seeing the greatest default in recent history if the US government does not reach a deal concerning the debt limit or the debt ceiling. And I pray to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh that they never reach a deal because in not being able to do so will cause and create catastrophic, unprecedented financial difficulties and consequences. But what they're talking about right now to so-called try to wiggle their way out of the situation for a quick solution is minting a one trillion dollar coin which is no different from what Venezuela had done to so-called try and fight its inflation worries But despite all the jokes about who should go on to face of the coin, Chuck E. Cheese, Donald Trump, the Tempt, or Taunton GOP, their scholars should be behind it too. However, improbable, it is conceivable the government could turn one trillion into a coin of the realm without lawmakers having a say. How is, that, how is this possible when the Treasury Secretary can't simply print money to pay public debts? is because a quirky law from more than 20 years ago seemed to allow the administration to mint coins. And this is no different from what 
the old pagan Roman Empire had done right before its collapse. And America is Rome all over again. Ain't nothing new under the sun of any denomination without congressional approval as long as they're pl platinum. The intent was to help with the production of commemorative coins for collectors, not to create a nuclear option in a fiscal crisis. Oops. Now, this article is pretty lengthy and I would say somewhat intricate. So what I'll do is, is that I will leave it in the description box of this lesson so that you brothers and few sisters can read because I only simply want to extract the points, the main points from this article. Okay. What's necessary is for Congress to show that the world can count on, on America paying its debt a platinum coin. She told CNBC, it's really a gimmick. Sure it is, said Rohan Gray, a Wilamati University law professor and expert on physical policy. The fact that the coin represents an accounting gimmick is a source of its strength rather than a weakness. Gray wrote in a 2020 to 2021 study in the Kentucky Law Journal. The idea of fighting an accounting problem with an accounting solution is entirely coherent. The debt ceiling itself can be viewed as one big poorly designed accounting gimmick. The U.S. will hit the ceiling October 18th unless Congress acts in time to suspend it. The two parties are in a stalemate in the Senate. Republicans unwilling to join Democrats in what used to be a routine exercise. Democrats holding back on using only their own using only their own votes to fix the problem. That's what makes a shiny coin with a 1 and 12 zeros tempting to some. Is that untested and audacious path actually work? And it's not. It's not, man. So now that we've read this article, let's read the last article that we have here. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen trashed the idea of minting a 1 trillion coin to defuse the debt ceiling crisis as the U.S. veered toward what could be a devastating default on its debt payments because America is roughly $30 trillion in debt. Okay. When you look at the debt clock, you'll see about $29 trillion or 28 about to be 29 which is roughly 30 Anything above a five will give you a, will give you a rough estimate of a whole. For example, anything above five will give you ten as a rough estimate. Reading on, it says I'm opposed to it, and I don't believe we should consider it seriously. Why? Because they call it a gimmick, as we had just read in that previous article from the AP. Yellen told CNBC on Tuesday, "It's really a gimmick." See. And what's necessary is for Congress to show the world can count on American or America paying its debts. And the world does not and won't count on America, Babylon the Great, at this moment in time to pay its debts. Because most countries have been shifting away from the usage of the U.S. dollar and have been introducing their own form of CBDCs, which is centralized digital currencies okay because all roads are leading to a one war government that is Esau, Edom's no order and where all buying and selling will be centralized under one blockchain that they will oversee so that they can utilize the MOTB, okay, which is the RFID market chip. She says, it's really a gimmick. And what's necessary is for Congress to show the world can count on America paying its debts. Here you have a short clip.
Madam Secretary, obviously there are debates about whether whether it will pay for itself and what the cost will ultimately be. Given the debt uh, that we uh, have generated uh, over, well, now a very long time, frankly, on a bipartisan basis, I wanted to ask you about uh, a proposal that Paul Krugman has gotten behind recently, and that is uh, what's called the trillion dollar coin uh, as a as a possible fix or tool in your toolbox to solve this, effectively minting a coin that could pay off some of our debt. What do you think of that? I'm opposed to it, and I don't believe that we should consider it seriously. It's really a gimmick, and what's necessary is for Congress to show that um, the world can count on America paying its debts. This is equivalent, the platinum coin is equivalent to asking the Federal Reserve to uh, print money to cover deficits that Congress is unwilling to cover by issuing debt. It compromises the independence of the Fed, conflating monetary and fiscal policy. And um, instead of showing that Congress and the administration um, can be trusted to pay, to pay the country's bills, it really does the opposite. Madam Secretary, it's great. She added the platinum coin is equivalent to asking the Federal Reserve to print money to cover deficit that Congress is unwilling to cover by issuing debt. It's compromised, it compromises the independence of the Fed, conflating monetary and physical policy. And she pretty much, she pretty much gave uh, the points of what is written here in the article in the short clip. So now let's go back to the scriptures. I will also leave this in the link of the uh, in the description box of this lesson, Lord's willing. So now let's go back to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 7, verse 19, because what is coming is hyperinflation, which hyperinflation is the extreme expansion of money supply is basically everything when everything uh, skyrockets in, in price for example a, a bottle of milk which might usually cost about a few dollars might soon cost about five six hundred dollars two thousand dollars likewise a loaf of bread when everything goes up massively in price, where people can't even buy it because th the money has no value, because it's 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 excessively uh, floating around in, in in the economies, it's 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 printed too much. The more they print, is the less um, value it is. So it says, they shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Why is that? Because everything is going to be worthless. Just like in the Warren Republic, people are going to be people are going to be using dollar notes to create the uh, fires during the winter, man. <laughs> they shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed, because it will have no worth, no value. Because the dollar is not intrinsic, it has no inherent value. It, it's extrinsic, meaning that it gets its value externally from people's trust in it. But what has been happening? People have been moving away from dollar. And people have been moving away from using the dollar, trusting the dollar. Okay. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord Yahweh. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is a stumbling block of their iniquity. And that's also written in the Apocrypha. That gold up being the ruin of many. So, what's coming, people's money won't be able to save them. It's going to be worthless because of inflation and then hyperinflation. A total economic collapse. So this is back in the book of James, last scripture. Lord's willing, this lesson is edifying. So 
chapter 5, verse 1. Go to Nai Richmond. Or the Richmond, the elites of Esau Edom. Weep in the half of your miseries that shall come upon you. What miseries? Them losing all their money. And then going into slavery under the nation of Israel. Your riches are corrupted. Why? Because everything that they've gotten, they've gotten so through ill-gotten gains. To the raping, robbing, and murdering. Of nations. To globalization. In the guise of uh, democracy and all these things. And your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold, and this is the point. Your gold and silver is cankered. It's corrupted. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you. Because it's all going to be melted away. In nuclear fire. And shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. For who? For the, for the nation of Israel. Beginning with Yahweh Shai and his elect. Lord's willing, I'm of that number. As well as you brothers and few sisters. Because the scripture says in the book of Job, the 20th chapter. Which this will be the last script, uh, scripture. Chapter 20, verse 15, he had swallowed down riches and shall vomit them up, up again. <laughs> so they have eaped treasures for the last days to vomit them all back up again for the elect. All that money that they, they have, all that gold, all, all those precious stones and all that stuff. Because real money is, is silver and gold and cattle. That's going to be for us, man. All is willing, I'm of the elect. As well as you brothers and a few sisters. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai shall cast him out of his belly. And that's what's going to happen. So with that, I pray this lesson was edifying to the elect. Lord's willing until the next. I say Shalom.